there's a lot of good and bad things going on in my garden right now. So I thought I'd just walk you through some of the things that I'm seeing. I started an experiment with a few little leaf babies and different fertilizers. This was about 45 days ago that it started. You can see this one is getting a lot of aerial roots. And in this case, I think it's getting them because there's fairly high humidity around it because I keep this propagation tray typically fairly wet. I also have not been watering it very consistently in the past two weeks. So I think it's really searching for water. You can see there are some underwatered leaves there that are looking deflated. Interestingly though, these other two are just fine with that same watering frequency. All that said, I do need to get back to watering these a lot more consistently. These other three are part of that same experiment, just a different plant type and on a different shelf. You can see that for the most part they are doing well. I have had a few little dried up leaves, but other than that, everything is staying pretty plump and they're growing really well. Also on the propagation front, I have these two Fred Ives that I chopped off a very long time ago. I pulled one of them up here in the Succulent Tracker app just so you can see what has happened with them. So I cut this on the 13th of January. It's now the middle of November and it has not grown as much as I had hoped, but you can see it was just growing little by little by little. And then I ended up fertilizing it with some worm castings not too long ago. And since then it has really started to take off and is growing a lot faster. So this one I'm hoping will continue to grow faster as again, I'm more consistent with watering, but I am happy with the progress so far. When I moved from Arizona to Utah, I chopped up the dinosaur back cactus that I had because it was gigantic. And this was one of the cuttings from it. I left it for about nine months without doing anything. It was actually in a dark room. It didn't have any light or water and it was just fine. And then in February, I potted it up as you see it here and it has not done very well. I believe it's starting to rot, but interestingly, it's also not been growing roots. If I pull it up here, you can see it has just a couple little nubs of roots on there but notice the darkness around the base. I think in my attempt to encourage it to grow more roots, it absorbed a lot of water just through contact with the skin of the plant and is causing the whole thing to rot. So my guess is if I were to chop this up and look at it inside, I think it would be very mushy and not healthy. So I don't think this cutting is actually going to survive, but I am letting it dry out in hopes that it will make it. <laughs> This happens a lot too because it has not rooted. I'm really happy with this propagation tray at the moment. I love this little Ripsilis baby that has just the tiny little sprouts growing off of it. And same with this string of turtles. It's just itty bitty and super cute. These Haworthia were pretty stressed a while ago and they hadn't been growing very much. But as I have increased my watering frequency, they are growing much better now. This Cedum adelphii is growing really well under the grow lights. It has a nice intense orange color and it's still very plump and firm. On the other hand, this one that is just one shelf below and a very similar, if not the exact same type of plant is really struggling. They're planted in very similar pots in very similar soil but this one has consistently not been very happy. So I think the best option for this one is probably gonna to be to unpot it and check on the roots and then possibly pot each of these individual stems in a pot of their own. That way I can give them individual attention because as you can see, this one right here is a lot more firm. The leaves don't bend nearly as much as these that just are very limp. So this is showing signs of underwatering, but I actually water it about once a week, maybe every 10 days. That could be that it's eventually caused those roots to rot and now there's just not roots there. But I've been having problems with this plant for about a year. So it's not a new problem from watering too frequently. And even when I was watering it less frequently, it still looked like this. So I think it's time to unpot this one and try something new. I pruned this guy about a month and a half ago and it already has some really nice new growth on it. So I'm excited with the progress there and I may end up pulling off some of these upper leaves and propagating those individually once the new little rosettes are a little bit bigger. I haven't really shown this aloe very much on the channel 
it started being kind of stretched out. As you can see here, there's a lot of space between the leaves. As it has gotten closer to the lights, it's now very close to the lights, it has really turned just a beautiful purple pink color and the leaves are now very, very close together. This plant is probably due for some chopping up, but I've just liked seeing that really intense color on it. And so I've just left it for now, but it is on my project to-do list. This arrangement I got about a year ago from my sister, and I did a video where I pulled it all apart and repotted everything because I had severely neglected it. It has since started really, really flourishing, and these Haworthiopsis, I think, are ready maybe to even go in a pot all of their own. I could definitely leave them in here with the Crassula, and they will continue to keep growing, but I also like having my succulents potted individually as I find it makes it a little bit easier for me to take care of them and give them the individual attention that they need. Lastly, I just wanted to give a little bit of an update on this Calicia navicularis. In a previous video, I showed how I broke apart a plant and just had a ton of cuttings of this plant, some of which were healthier than others, but it has finally started to root and these plants are really starting to grow and take off. The ones I just showed you are here on the bottom plant shelf, which the lights on this are about 18 inches above the tops of the plants. And as you can see, these do have a fairly dark color. They're not a vibrant green. So they are definitely getting plenty of light. This one on the other hand is on a different plant shelf. And as you can see, the lights are much closer. I would say they're probably about six inches away from the plant right now. And if you'll notice, this has a lot more vibrant purples and kind of reds to it, more so than the green color we saw on the other one. So this growth is very firm, it's very compact, and this plant is doing quite well here. While it's totally fine for this plant to be kind of that deep green or even a bright green, I really like this stress color that's the bright purple. This is another grouping of that Calicia navicularis, and it is also on a shelf that the lights are much lower, but this pot isn't as tall, so it's still not as close to the light as that grouping that I just showed you. So it's somewhere in between. It has some purple, but it also has some bright greens. And it's been really fun to just see the difference in growth from all these different planters, but the same plant from the same original pot. There's definitely a lot more that I need to work on in my garden, but overall I'm pretty happy with how things are looking, what plants are growing. There are definitely things that are growing a little more slowly than I would like or that aren't thriving quite as much as I had hoped. But for how low maintenance these plants are, especially for the quantity of plants that I own, I am so happy with this setup and with how everything is looking.